Hi, my name is Steve Petzold, a resident of Saugus and of Santa Clarita. I'm here today to speak to you about Measure E. My wife and I are not unlike a lot many of you. We moved here from the Downey area in 2000, largely because of the great public schools that they had here in Santa Clarita. My first touch with College of the Canyons came in 2004 when my son Spencer went there as, as at the Academy of the Canyons. My son Sp Sam started to attend COC about 2012 and at that time one of the reasons for the selection was the first year experience program that guaranteed him the classes that he would need to complete the college in two years. My daughter Clarissa started at College of the Canyons in 2015 and we were somewhat surprised to find out that the first year experience program no longer existed. When I, first, when I heard about Measure E, I decided to start looking at the actual measure and find out why it was that we needed new buildings. When I first heard about Measure E the, about the third week of March, I was immediately concerned and having worked on Measure S, I ran down to Norwalk to pull up the, all the ballot arguments. Um, at that time I read the ballot question and I was surprised to see that it was about a 75 word run-on sentence that did not include the word taxes and assessment and I became very suspicious. So I started to dig a little bit deeper and try to find out who was funding it and what the actual ballot arguments were for building more buildings at COC. After my daughter started attending College of the Canyons, I was surprised to hear the difficulty that she was having in getting one of the core classes that she needed, which was biology. And I found that to be very strange, especially in light of the experience that we had had with our son Sam using first year experience. Many of us don't even know that we live in a community college district that has geographic boundaries, roughly Ventura Line to Sand Canyon and Castaic down to Newhall. In this area is the, the area that the tax collector can collect assessments to provide for facilities. So it is the people in this area that will be voting on Measure E. What I found out and was absolutely surprised about was that according to the COC 2015-16 fact book, 48% of the students that attend the College of the Canyons do not live within the district. In other words, they are commuter students and we are building facilities for students that don't live in our district. This is the reason that our children can't get the classes they need at COC. According to the COC fact book, out of 20,300 students, 9,782 live outside the district. More surprisingly, more surprising to me was the fact that the participation rate for students that live in the community college district is 18 percent lower than the average for the state of California. On average about 6.4 percent of the students, uh, uh, 6.4 of the residents in the district use the, co use the college facilities in their community college district. That's only 5.3 percent in the Santa Clarita Valley. Why are our students choosing not to use the many benefits of College of the Canyons? Could it possibly be that they can't get to classes? As the weeks progressed, I began working with a man named Richard Michael out in the Walnut, California area who studies school bonds, public agency bonds. And I started looking at my own tax bill. On your tax bill here, you have an area called uh, voted indebtedness. And that covers Castaic Lake Water Agency, the community college, CLC, high schools, and elementary schools. Since 2001, we have added $220,000 worth of uh, $220 million worth of debt. We did $80 million in 2001 and we did $160 million in 2008 for a total of $240 million. We are still paying that and it's re reflected on your bill. Even more surprisingly, I noticed that the payment rate that appeared in the tax information statement of Measure M called for a payment rate of $9.73 per $100,000 of evaluation. When 
Richard Michael and I backed that out through data available, um, we found out that we're, we are actually paying nearly $15 per $100,000 of assessment. They always spend all the money. They could limit the amount of money they borrow by looking at the payment rate that they gave to the homeowners when they issued the bonds, but no, they spend all the money even if it exceeds that payment rate. That could very well happen with Measure E. In Measure E, College of the Canyons is proposing to borrow $230 million. And they refer that to being a modest amount. That will bring the total amount of financing up to nearly $470 million. What's more shocking is that the debt payment service of all those bonds, that's Measure C, Measure M, and Measure E, will be nearly $1 billion. We are near the playground area at Canyon Country Park because this is general, generational debt that we are putting on to our children. And I think that we need to seriously consider and do our due, gil, due gil, diligence to see whether we want to put this much more additional debt on our children. At the federal level, we're approaching $21 trillion in debt. The state of California has nearly $400 billion of unfunded liabilities. We are driving the debt up in the community college district to a level that we really have to be concerned about. Even more shockingly is that it's part of the business plan for College of the Canyons. They will be back in another 10 years to borrow even more money saying that they have to build more buildings and, and maintain the parking lots, the plumbing, and the electrical for the ones that they have. We need to scale back to the size of the district and be smart about why we acquire debt. We can't keep acquiring debt. We have to face the element in the room. If a problem remains hidden, it will remain broken. So what are we to do? I propose that we vote no on Measure E on June 7th and put the brakes on acquiring debt. We are not voting to close the school. No one is going to lose their job. We have an election cycle coming up at which we can begin the discussion of how much and what the mission of our college should be here in Santa Clarita. Also, interestingly, there will be a huge statewide facilities bond issue on the November ballot that we're told that we need to qualify for to get supplemental money from the state. So we borrow money here, and then the state borrows money, and they send it back to us, and we're supposed to think that that's free money. That's all debt that is acquired in the name of the people here. I suggest that the Board of Trustees petition the Chancellor of Community Colleges in the state of California to begin to pare back the number of out-of-district students in our district here so that our students can get their classes in our district. We also want to look at perhaps reforming community college system in California. That might be making it just like the universities and colleges. We cannot maintain open enrollment in this district with the limited matriculation standards that exist. Other than that, I might even suggest uh, merging with the Antelope Valley Community College District because then you have a much wider assessment base to put the tax against and if we're all going to benefit from the facilities we're building, shouldn't we look at building that assessment base as broadly as we can to limit that? I am not in any way opposed to education. The low tuition, $46 a credit hour, skews the fact that we are providing facilities which cost way in excess of what that covers. We need to rationalize our system and be smart and do it right. Let's not pass these debt on to our children. Please vote no on Measure E on June 7th. And for your best information, please go to nococtax.com. Thank you, and we will see you on June 8th.